Welcome back to Dusting History. Today I've got a 5 by 7 inch glass negative from 1919 and the photograph shows the pilot house of His Majesty's airship the R-34. So before I get started I'm just going to do a cursory pass across the image and get rid of some of the worst of the uh, damage, just the really obvious stuff, and I'll do a more thorough clean later on. So you can see here I've opened up the layers palette and I'm going to add two levels adjustment layers and one of them is to expose for the people on the ground and the pilot house a little better and the other one is just a general grade. So you can see I've put a grad in the mask of this adjustment layer and when I toggle it on and off I get a much much better level of, of contrast on the people on the ground. Now going into Topaz Photo AI, I'm going to fiddle with that for a little bit and try and sharpen the image a little bit. I'm not trying to go too fast or too far with them. You can see I'm turning off recovering faces because, well I will, because you can see it does too good a job of sharpening faces and they don't sit with the rest of the image. So I'm looking for a sharpen but not an, an AI kind of creepy face solution. So I think that's pretty good. I'm getting some really good detail there, some extra visual clues and some clarity to the image. So now with that on uh, board, I'm going to go through and despot with a fine tooth comb the whole thing using the remove tool. I'm just going to zoom in, zoom out, take out all the dots. And there's a ton. Now you can see some of these horizontal lines. I thought they were actually scratches on the negative, but they actually go underneath that text, which makes me feel like they're part of the fabric of the uh, envelope of the blimp. So I've left those. Next, you can see this little area here where there's been some stuff on the negative, like there's a lump there. So I've added another levels adjustment layer, made it quite dark. And then in the mask, I'm just painting into that zone there. And I'm gonna try and paint out that whole area. And then once I've done that, I'll go back to the levels adjustment layer that that mask belongs to and adjust it until I think the grayscale level or the, or the level of contrast in that little area kind of matches the rest of the image. So you see here now I pull back up the layers adjustment, the levels, and I move the sliders, either the bottom end where the blacks are, the top end where the whites are, or the grays in the middle, and try and find a happy place where I can at least start to correct it. Now I know this is probably not kosher but I'm going to merge those two layers down so that I have a layer on top with that correction and it's got quite a bit of buzzy noise in it, quite grainy. I think that's part of whatever it was that landed on the negative. So now that I've got the levels more similar to each other I can go through with the remove tool and just paint here and there. I do like how the little guy's legs are sticking out of the hole there and I also like how it's darker above his legs as though the, the undersurface is reflective and his darker legs are reflecting up. So I'm not going to try and get rid of that tone entirely. I will however get a straight up paintbrush and paint into that uh, manhole hatch and try and darken it off a little bit. In there. Straight paintbrush, selecting some colour and just painting in that, that little area.
Now I went to palette.fm, which is a AI auto colorization app that I uh, subscribe to. And I used a text prompt and put in words like uh, military, air force, blimp, vintage, all those kind of things, trying to uh, give it enough prompts to give me a starting point to, uh, to start working on. I also uh, made some specific choices on the color of the grass and the color of the sky, the time of day, the heat in the sky. I made a lot of, um, of my own little uh, text prompts to try and, and force the palette into where I wanted to get to. And I got a pretty good starting point here. It's, uh, it's pretty colorful. The blimp and the pilot house are really weirdly colored, but some of that tone in the grass and the t color in the sky and, and some of the, um, the color of the uniforms is, is pretty good. So starting with a new layer that's set to color, you can see I'm starting to knock a lot of the color out of the blimp. I'm leaving some of that warm grassy tone on the underside because I like to suggest that the actual blimp's reflective and straight above the pilot house I've left a bit of that darker blue kind of color as though metal on metal is reflecting into itself. The envelope for the blimp was fabric but they did coat it with an aluminium coating so that made it quite reflective. Also you see here I'm, I'm putting a lot of flat kind of greys into the pilot house although I am being a little scattergun with it you can see I'm leaving bits of that brown to poke through and some of those other colors because it does actually give it a variation a little bit of tone as well as leaving it browner underneath again to suggest it's metal and that the grass below is bouncing back up into the vehicle gives it a little bit of wear and tear I do like that sort of sense of it being reflective but, but still quite natural in tone. Now I'm not quite sure who's what in terms of uniforms. I have reached out on Reddit to, um, to some military nuts to try and find out what's what but I haven't heard back yet. So I've pressed on regardless and generally the uniforms are these bluer tones and some of those kind of more khaki kind of colours so I'm just going to use my best guess. I'll probably loop back around at a later date and, and true some of these up if somebody can provide me with, with some information. What's also telling is a lot of those people, particularly on the, the pilot ha um, house as well as a lot of the people on the ground, are, they don't have flesh tone. They've been sort of tinted grey or grass colour or sky colour and I'll go through that with a fine tooth comb soon as well. Again just finding more reference for uniforms at the time. I do believe this is when the British craft landed in the States, so I think a lot of the guys on the ground are US Air Force or Army. But a lot of what's on the screen differs from what's in the reference in that a lot of them have darker pants and lighter tops or darker tops and lighter pants and it's I can't quite tell who's what but I think a, a general smattering of them of different colors sort of is appealing <laughs> so I'm gonna stick with it until someone tells me otherwise you can also see if you look between the, the guys the grass in the background changes color a fair bit too and I'm gonna have to address all of that you can see there it's kind of blue and green on the left and I like that but then it go, gets into much more grassy colors as well as um, quite red in places and so particularly on the right here it's quite sort of purpley red so I'm going to go through and sample colors from the left where I like what the uh, AI did and I'm going to try and just scooch those colors across it does a lot actually to pop the guys out of the plate Also quite often there's a bunch of haloing on this stuff too where some of the brown of the jacket will bleed into the grass or the grass will bleed into the jacket so you really are spending a long time just repainting a lot of this stuff. It's starting to look interesting.
This is me correcting some of that haloing. You can kind of see around the people. Um, the, the, that kind of lovely smoky blue colour of the distant horizon is kind of fairly polluted, as well as around the prop where I just roughly painted brown before I'm going through and cleaning some of that up. Always handy to have reference for flesh tone. Uh, I've picked people who are standing in the sun, crowds of people in the sun, to try and find colours that I can use to uh, paint into the people who are in the sunlight. You can sort of see if I put it on someone in the shade, it's way too colourful and uh, it doesn't give you the right idea. So I'm really, as you can see, targeting the guys uh, who are in the, in the sun. And I'll show you in a minute my methodology. There's Flesh tones never ever just a, a single colour. Um, hands and faces have areas where the um, the blood pulls more and, and areas where the, the blood's not as, as present. On a hand, you, you'll generally have paler arms and paler palms and then more sort of red tips on the fingertips. So I, I like to be really mindful of that stuff when I'm painting so that an arm will be an arm, but then it'll, it'll come down to fingers and the fingers will just be that little bit more red. I also like the way because skin is, is subs or translucent, um, the subsurface of it means that when the hot sun rolls into it, the shadow side of an arm, it generally gets that more saturated little line of, of colour, of flesh tone, where the, um, the sunlight rolls into shadow. I am sticking kind of more grey beards on a lot of these guys. I know they're probably all very well clean shaven, but it's just a, a nice little tonal shift to, to desaturate their chins a little bit. Just adding that those little fingers and hands onto these figures really pops them out. You can see all those arms reaching for the wires in the background, how they're all grey. You can see now I've got a reference of people sitting in the shade and I'm using that to, uh, to derive some colours for the guys in the shade, obviously. <laughs> Some people just sort of come naturally. They, they, you just slap some colour down and they look fantastic. And then other times you find yourself going over and over or revisiting people uh, repeatedly just to try and make them not look like you've just flood filled them with a very, very simple colour. Just adding flesh tones to those reaching arms in the back has added a lot as well. Quite often, um, because skin is also reflective, you do tend to get uh, some sky colour, some sky dome reflecting into the brighter parts of a, of a face. And you'll see with this chap here, I will show you what I mean. Basically, I sample these colours here. You can see there are multiple, multiple colours on the one face. Now, generally we're redder from the ears onto the cheeks and across the nose like that. There's like a T-zone. And then you have a slightly more yellow flesh tone elsewhere. Um, and I tend to grey it off or, or brown it off around the chin for a male to give them that sort of slightly uh, under uh, shaved look. And then uh, bright spots are generally desaturated and quite often have uh, some, like I say, some reflective nature to them. So they take on a little bit of the colour of the sky. All right, a little bit more reference. I found the kind of US troops from the era there. Those guys are recreating something from the period, the 1900s, the First World War. 
and I've noticed they've got those kind of broad hats that some of the guys in my picture have. So I thought I'd try and use those as a, as a bit of a guide. You can see that they've got dark blue pants uh, and, and a kind of khaki top, which is great. And that sort of holds true of some of those guys in, in the frame that I can see. So until someone messages me and tells me I've got it all wrong, I'll call that done. That's uh, the pilot house of R34, 1910. And cleaned up. I'm really happy how this one turned out and uh, look forward to hearing your thoughts on it. Once again, thank you very much for joining me. Bye bye.